I did a lot of research before I started this project and I thought it would be pretty straightforward, but nothing prepared me emotionally for just how beautiful that green color would be. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, in a previous video, we made a bunch of these. This is a storage pin for my squat rack. This is just made out of 5 8 inch round mild steel, with the collar welded on it and some threads on the end. And this is just used for storing accessories on the squat rack. Now, when I made these, I pointed out that since these are just mild steel, they will eventually rust. Very little rust where I live, but these are gonna be exposed to constant hand contact, uh, so they're going to get skin oils on them. They'll probably be exposed to some sweat. It is fitness equipment after all, and they will eventually rust. So I mentioned in that previous video that I would like to try nickel electroplating. And today we're going to give it a go. Done some reading online. I've never actually done it before, but I've done some reading and it looks pretty simple. Should just need some vinegar, salt, nickel, and electricity. So let's give it a try. And yeah, this one's already been plated. Pretty, isn't it? If you're not familiar with how electroplating works, I will give you the one minute Wikipedia version. Electroplating is also called electrochemical deposition. And the idea is that we are going to take a part that we want to plate and a metal we want to plate it with. We're going to immerse both of those in a bath and we're going to use electricity to drive that metal over through the solution and plate it onto the part. In this case, they're illustrating it with copper but we're going to be doing this with nickel. The concept is the same. The solution has to already contain a bath of positive ions of the plating material. So when the battery causes electrons to flow from the plating material to the object that you want to plate, it causes positive ions of that anode material to flow through the bath and onto the part. There's a lot of chemistry here and there's a lot of details, but it really is pretty simple to set up. So let's give it a try. To actually do the electroplating, we are going to need to make up a solution of nickel acetate. And we're just gonna start with some distilled white vinegar as a source of acetic acid. And I've just got a plastic tub here that's about the right size to hold the parts I need. I need about an inch of depth or a little more than an inch of depth because the largest part of the part is an inch in diameter. So I'm going to pour in a couple of quarts here. Let's call it a couple of liters because I'm going to use tablespoons later and people love it when I mix units. So that's the acid from the vinegar. And now we just need to add some salt to make the bath more conductive. And I'm going to add about a tablespoon of canning and pickling salt. And this is just straight sodium chloride. It's a fine salt that should dissolve easily and it has no declumping additives. It has no iodine. So there's nothing in it to contaminate the chemistry. So it's a good choice for something like this where we don't want the bath to have a bunch of stray ions in it that we didn't invite to the party. Get this stirred up, get those sodium and chloride ions into the solution so that they'll be available to help it carry current. Now I've got some strips of nickel here and I just bought these off Amazon. They're advertised as 99.6% pure, which is probably about the minimum that you would want for an application like this. I'm going to try to bend them so that my alligator clips don't actually go into the bath because I don't want to extract ions from the alligator clips. I just want to extract the nickel ions. Now I've got these set up on the positive and the negative, and we'll start by just running a little bit of current through the bath with a power supply. Now this power supply has a constant current mode, so I'm going to set the maximum voltage to the maximum it can deliver, which is 30 volts, and then I'll set the current to about half an amp, 0.5 amps. And it will, as soon as I switch it on here, it will start flowing current through the bath. Now the electrons, of course, are flowing from the negative to the positive, but the nickel ions should be traveling from the positive plate to the negative. And you can see after we've let this run for about 30 minutes, we're just starting to see some green color here, which means we are getting ions into the solution. I'm going to go ahead and bump the current up a little bit. Let's try one amp and see what happens. You can see the bubbling on the cathode is increasing. That's actually, I believe, electrolysis where we're extracting hydrogen from the water. Try two amps. 
Nothing's exploded yet. Let's try three amps. That's the maximum this power supply can run on one channel. Looks okay. I think I'll just let this run for a while and we'll see what we get. We're running three amps at about 26 volts. And again, the power supply is adjusting the voltage to get the current that I asked for. After about another hour, it is uh, turning much more green, meaning we're getting a lot more nickel into the solution, but it is starting to get warm. I'm a little bit worried about that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this back down. I got plenty of time and I don't need to melt anything. This will make a pretty big mess if I melt it and then I'll have to start all over. The smell of vinegar is getting pretty strong in the shop, so I'm going to try to put a lid on this thing, figure out how to get that snapped on. And here we are several hours later after uh, letting this thing set. Eventually I turned it back down to half an amp and just let it run until the solution didn't get any darker. So I think this is about as saturated as it's going to get. Just take the electrodes out here and take a look. This is the one that was the positive. You can see it's lost a lot of material around the edges. It's left some kind of black crusties. I assume that's the remaining 0.4% that's not really nickel. You can see the cathode, though, has picked up that material, so the solution is probably saturated and we're plating it now onto the cathode. So I think the solution should be about ready and we should be ready to try and plate some actual parts. I think for the actual plating, I'm going to put this one that picked up the additional nickel material and use that as the anode to supply ions to the solution, since there's more material on it than there is on the other piece. And we'll start by just trying to plate a piece of copper wire. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what settings are needed. So I'm just going to give this a try and see what happens. I have no idea how fast it's going to go. I'll uh, zoom in here so you can get a little better look at it and we'll just switch it on. Running at half an amp, uh, there's very little happening, very little that's visible. You can just see the slightest little tinge of silver on the wire. And after letting that run for quite a while, it, uh, it still looks coppery, but once I pull it out, you can see that it does have kind of a dull silver on it. Run this over to the buffer, buff it up and see what we get. And that looks like nickel. Looks like we got a good coating of nickel on that copper wire. I have no idea how thick it is, but we've proven the concept. So I think we should move on to some actual steel parts. Now the actual anode in here, on the other hand, did not fare that well. That additional material that was plated onto it during the solution making phase isn't very secure, so we're getting more junk in the bath. Now, before we plate the actual parts, I want to give them a good wipe down with acetone just to remove any skin oil, any lubricants that are left over from the cutting process. I just want to make sure that these are perfectly clean so that we have the best chance of getting a good secure plating. If there's any kind of oil or anything to contaminate the bath, that can really wreck the electroplating process. Just give these a good wipe. You can see I'm using gloves to avoid uh, getting the acetone on my hands. And you can see how well that worked. Vinyl gloves and acetone are not compatible. I've got some new vinyl gloves here so I don't put fingerprints on the clean parts. And I will wrap a copper wire around here. This will give me a way to handle it without touching it. And also a way to get the electricity to the part. And then in addition, I will clip off a couple of small pieces of copper wire and use those to suspend it off the bottom of the tank. Now, because these are such big parts, I'm going to go ahead and connect another wire and I'm going to put both of my nickel electrodes in the bath. These are both attached to the positive. So the nickel ions should come off of both of these and travel to the part being plated, which will be attached to the negative wire. So I've got that in the bath here. I'll kind of readjust things and try to get these equidistant so that the ion flow is even and the plating is even. I don't know how important that really is, but we'll turn on the power and I'm just gonna go straight to three amps because this thing has so much more surface area and we'll just let this thing run for a while and see what happens. It's starting to bubble, so I think everything looks fine. It's not very exciting though. But as I'm watching this, I'm noticing that I think I'm getting a little bit more bubbling near where the electrodes are closer to the part. So I'm gonna kinda 
move those out and try to get them parallel again i'm not sure how important this really is of course this little piece of wire will conduct electricity over to the electrodes let me make sure that's clear we'll just let this run i think i'll let it run for about 30 minutes and then we'll check the results and see what we've got okay it's been about 30 minutes let's turn off the power supply and pull out the part take off the negative electrode there and have a look at this it does appear to be plated it doesn't look like steel anymore it's a nice even silver color it's not quite as shiny as i expected let's get this rinsed off this is just some plain tap water mostly just want to get the acid off of it and looking at this a little closer it it sure is pretty it's not as shiny as i expected it's a little bit more of a matte finish but the plating is really quite even a lot more than i expected you can see the wire there is definitely plated i'm not sure how well it's plated down in the threads though that doesn't really matter it looks like i've got good coverage it looks like i've got good adhesion it is nice and shiny on that wire look at that if you put it right next to the original the bottom is the bare steel and the top is the nickel so you can see there's a little bit of a yellow cast to it which i understand there's some kind of different colors you can get from nickel electroplating it looks fine to me let's see what happens if we buff it I have my Baldor buffer here set up with some non-woven pads. These are essentially fine Scotch-Brite, and I use these for surfacing parts after machining. Now, I don't really know what to expect here, so I will just run the part over the pads and just see how it reacts. So far, it looks to be reacting pretty well. I'll try to hit all of the surfaces here. I was a little bit worried this was just going to tear the nickel plating off, but it doesn't appear to be. It appears to be just be buffing it up. And if you look at my hands, you'll note they're clean. When I do this with steel, my hands turn absolutely black. So this appears to be a really durable finish. And here are the results. The top part here is the nickel plated one that just came off of the buffer. It looks like it's got a nice even satin finish over the entire surface. The bottom one is the bare steel and you can see the color is slightly different, but the texture looks like it came through. The weld looks particularly good. The nickel plating got down in all the little crevices and left a really nice bright satin finish. It looks like the threads are plated well. Uh, the threads in particular I was a little bit concerned about, so I'll test with a nut and Oh, it seems to fit pretty much the same. So this nickel plating must be very, very thin. I tried to measure with a micrometer and I really couldn't tell the difference before and after. For not having any clue what I'm doing, I sure did get some nice results. I've got six of these plated now and buffed up and I just could not be happier with the results. They're really pretty, especially the welds. Those really cleaned up nice. I poured off the nickel acetate solution into some jars. I will hang on to these and I should be able to use those for future nickel electroplating projects. These nickel electrodes, however, have seen better days. Um, I could probably still get a little bit of use out of these, but you can see a lot of material has been removed off of both of these. So I'll probably pick up some more just to have on hand, but the parts look like they're gonna stand up really well to handling and skin oil. I haven't left any marks on these at all and my hands after handling them are just completely clean. I did not expect that. That is just so different from handling the bare steel. Well, I think this project is a win. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.